Hello, and welcome to Casual Shenanigans Gaming, a podcast all about DayZ and other things PC gaming related. I'm one of your hosts, Jerm Gaming, and tonight I am joined by Joel. Hey, guys. And Dave. Hey guys, I am Dave, also known as the not so evil Evil Viking Thirteen, and we have a great show for you tonight. Um, let's start with the news. Cigari Twelve in chat says, "I'll go walk the dog and hopefully return before the stream starts." Brb. Well, you suck, Cigari. We're moving <laughs> on without you. So now, close. Um, we have a lot of news stories uh, this week, so let's start with GameStop. The PC gamer's best friend. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Isn't that their slogan, actually? Like, no. underneath the sign, the PC gamer's best friend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a uh, famous games retailer, GameStop, is looking to expand its reach. You can read between the lines there. GameStop realizes that physical games are dying. It will no longer be able to sell you used games for much longer. Um, they've revealed their plan for what they're calling GameStop 3.0. I wasn't aware they were on 2.0, but here we are at GameStop 3.0. A new phase of the company's lifespan that will see it aggressively expand its footprint into gaming-adjacent tech fields. So this probably means they're going to be selling uh, iPhones, iPads. Oh. um, So like the new Radio Shack, then. (laughs) Pretty much. Well, yeah, it's everyone like, we're going to expand into things that people like. Like cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's what they're doing. Uh, they're also going to be closing between 120 and 130 of their 6,500 global brick and mortar locations. So. That's sad. Is it? <laughs> well, okay. Was that not convincing enough? I, it's I it's a little sad for me. I mean, I, I, mean, I from hope, a nostalgia I hope, factor, I hope, you're like, oh, no, GameStop. But on the other hand, you're like, when's the last time you needed to go to GameStop? <laughs> I, I, I go there all the time. Honestly, I do. I mean, not like every freaking day, but there's some, for me, there's something nice about going into a, a gaming related store and picking up. I mean, like picking up the PS4. I pre ordered it. It's fun going there. I love chatting with the guys. They're excited about have, the thing. If you have a good store that has, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. But, Fighting off the seven pre order offers they give you and the three <laughs> offers to subscribe to But honestly, to their any GameStop is generally better than walking into Walmart and talking with someone, okay? Well, yeah, That's compared really to Walmart, bad. I was compared to Amazon, where on the day it comes out, it shows up at your door for the exact same price and you don't but have to get dressed. But not all the time. Not all the time. Or Steam. Amazon has never missed a date for where me. Where it just hey, downloads hey, hey. and okay. then it's there. For, for Steam is for PC games, okay? Like, like if you have a console, or you can need console, to do that. You preload yeah. the game in it, and midnight, I can trade like, my I game in. It it's like, hey, if I hate it, I can trade my game in. And hurt the industry by not supporting the developers. <laughs> oh, you're a bad person, Joel. <laughs> uh, actually, I think I give more because you guys buy it at what one cent on Steam sales. So I think I'm and, donating a little bit hey, more. Joel, <laughs> have you seen Joel, my console look. experience? <laughs> oh, that's what we're calling now the console <laughs> experience. Joel, at, at least, Joel, our one cent goes to the developers and then Steam and not just to GameStop. <laughs> The developers no, okay. see none of that that use game sales. They, okay, trust me, from spending, spending some time on Polycount, GameStop is not loved in the development community at all. They Can't are despised why. in the development community because, I mean, maybe not not not, not despised. That's too strong of a word. But okay, for some people, despised <laughs> just because. No, no, yeah, I, I mean, because the use sales this is stuff, how it yeah, works. Fine. But yeah. I'm just saying, like, I generally buy my games kind of when they come out, so I actually am giving more to the developers. All right, I buy little... games when they come out eventually. Speaking of which, isn't Dark Souls two out like right now? Didn't it go live early? It yes. did. I I heard. Your Tim is that forty dollar deal still good, Jill? That you were telling me about uh, until tomorrow. I, no. Until tomorrow. Oh, I'm so tempted right now. I got all my, that camper cash, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my only good GameStop memory, Joel, is, and you're gonna appreciate this. The last game that I pre-ordered from GameStop and picked up in person was my collector's edition for Fallout 3 in the metal lunchbox with the bobblehead. Uh, that, that, when I first a, started working yeah. with you, that was the first thing I saw, and I was like, I could murder someone for that. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, could. No, 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 look up online right now. No, no, they no, are guys, so no, guys, expensive. Murder, murder is fine. You don't understand. Okay, it's a <laughs> limited edition. Look! Bobblehead. Look how much it costs on Amazon. It's like 115 bucks. Honestly, that is that worth thing. a man's life. It, it it's, is. It's kind of cool, but I don't know if you can tell on my camera here. The quality is awful. I can tell. It looks very Chinese. It it's looks like a happy meal toy. Base. From sitting on my desk, he fell over one day. Like the feet just broke off. 
from city <laughs> from the strenuous life of not moving on the level surface yeah if, if the paint doesn't line up like i could probably 3d print something for like 20 bucks it would be 10 times better than this but that was my gamestop experience was picking up that lunchbox on my lunch break at work <laughs> that was that was awesome oh, now okay. i can just get it from amazon so see so you guys i mean i guess you guys don't really care about it but Ooh. I I love. Are we doing a? Oh, uh, no, no. Are we doing a? We have a defender here, a lay wrong generation defender. Don't don't care. Don't care about the ways I mean, games I mean, okay. used to be. Okay. No, no, when, you, I kid, old, <laughs> when I was a kid, you are old. When I was a kid, you'd go to GameStop and you'd be like, "Can I have an NES cartridge?" And they're like, "We'll see who can blow the hardest." That person gets the <laughs> NES cartridge. <laughs> no, I was just saying. I, I do love the, I do love opening a brand new case for a game, and it's just like that brand new case smell. It's just I like I haven't had a case know, like, for a game in years. <laughs> I know what well, you're, you're missing out on some PS4. No, stuff. I had The Last of Us. I had The Last of Us case. Yeah, and you know what I did with it. I had to keep moving it around every couple of days because it kept getting in the way. And I sold it. I know that's sad. Is it? Because it was I, a freaking good game, and the multiplayer was amazing. I like collecting the uh, the boxes and stuff. Actually, I'm a sucker for that stuff. Let me take you through why Amazon is so great. This past week, me and Amazon have had this special relationship <laughs> where gobs of money are going their way, and I've had like four <laughs> or five boxes every single day showing up. Uh, Sounds like my tax return season. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much like that. Uh, I got a projector for anyone who doesn't. Well, I, no one would know. You guys know. Other people don't know. I know. Instead of getting a TV, we got a projector, and we're shooting it at the wall. About a 100-inch picture. Dave is upset that we're not shooting at a real screen. We'll see about the screen later. Jeremiah, right now, you have a light switch cover in the lower left part of your picture. You need to get a screen. Hold on, hold on. It's it's in the lower left-hand corner when you're watching 16.9 content. Most of the stuff we watch is 21.9. So it's not that's not even an issue. Also, the projector is just sitting on a like an old box right now. We haven't mounted it on the wall. The configuration will change and where it's projecting might change a little bit once it's mounted on the wall but uh we might get a screen we'll see but with that we had to get like hdmi switchers hdmi cables um a blu-ray drive i'll get back to that in a second um a little keyboard thing with a touchpad on it that's really cool it's just like boxes and boxes of amazon it's great because i think oh crap there's that one thing i need and i can just run to amazon and click the order button, and then it just shows up like a day or two later. Before you, you forget know. about it, too. <laughs> That's yeah, my before, problem. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's so awesome. So, I, I, you know, the last good game... I've never had a good GameStop experience, except once or twice I found, like, super cheap used games in the, like, the old PS2 rack, you know, they would keep in the middle of the floor of all the stuff they're trying to liquidate. I'd pick up, like, I think Spider-Man 2 for $4 or something. You know, every once in a while you get one of those... But uh, I have a, I have a good bad experience from them. <laughs> okay, that'd be most well, of my games. It wasn't really bad, but it was just kind of funny because like I know way more about games and stuff than they ever do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I walk in there and I was uh, I don't even remember what game I was getting, but so the guy was like, "Hey, do you want to put a pre order for Destiny?" I was like, "Oh, I was like, oh yeah." I was like, "I was like, the beta's coming out for that soon, isn't it?" And the guy's like, "Yeah." He's like, "He's like, it's actually out right now." And I was like, oh, really? I was like, I thought it was actually being delayed. He's like, no, no, it's it's out right now. Um, and so I got the, the beta code and everything, and I go home. I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. I can't wait to play. It's like, it was delayed. I was right. Like, I, the, guy <laughs> didn't, the guy didn't even know. I was like, oh. <laughs> it's going to be kind of hard to sell, uh, sell software that's like in development, though, for anybody when you're in a brick-and-mortar store. And all you're they the can do is all like, day. look at this magazine we published. It says this game's going to be amazing. You should check it out. <laughs> Our quarterly <laughs> magazine that's totally up to date. <laughs> What's the hey, name of their magazine? Informer is it Game magazine. Informer? Game it's actually Informer? really good. It's actually Game Informer really isn't bad. It's, it's you actually uh, get a lot of new stuff that don't come online. It, it comes on like an hour or two afterwards or like the day after, but they get some exclusive stuff, which is pretty interesting. They had the first look at Elder Scrolls Skyrim. They have a website? Uh, what, Game Informer? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get the digital version, or I had okay. gotten it for a while. But uh, I got the magazine for quite a while. It was great bathroom reading material. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> moving on to the Elder Scrolls Online. When you, when you online. working on script work there, Joel? <laughs> no, we, should just, we just got to... We just got to move on. Joel's oh. trying to derail the podcast again. We can't let him do that. How am I derailing it? 
talking about you pooping again, you like you always have to go back to these base levels of humor. You just that, can't let us I, keep the elevated no, I was, discussion. I was actually saying in the I glorious was PC material. master race on the clouds. We're all like, sitting there with harps and keyboards, just stroking them, and you're like, <laughs> "Poop, guys, poop." <laughs> have you seen always... my Wii U? I can play Zelda on it. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's actually how how Joel comes to me in the morning with a story. That's actually how he talks in the morning. <laughs> you nailed it. So, speaking of nailing it, the Elder Scrolls Online's <laughs> developers did not nail the production of this game. Um, so, they've had an invasion of cold farmers, which is that always is what you want in the MMO. Bombs. Yeah. What is uh, that? They've got a lot of bot groups that sit on top of boss monster spawns, and they can just constantly, like, kill the monsters. Uh, and then it has an open tap system in the game where people, like, whoever hits the monster once or twice, benefits from the full experience and loot privileges when the monster dies. It's part of their whole everyone's a winner strategy. Mm -hmm. huh. So they're trying to ban bot accounts. Um, they're doing a loot lockout timer. Uh, let me see. They've got like a gold selling black market. That's a really issue right now. Um, <laughs> apparently that's 85% of their tech support calls right now are people complaining about the the black market for gold. Oh, and there's a duping bug. So it is an Elder Scrolls game. You can dupe things. You can use uh, the arrow where you shoot out like a zillion <laughs> watermelons. Not, yeah. <laughs> they haven't said if it's that one in particular, but it'd be funny if like that piece of code made it all the way through. I doubt that's it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that. So I, good job, everybody. Does, does it not sadden you guys that like every single game whether or not it's good or bad, why is there always so many douchebag players? Like, I bet there's more players that just go, hey, we can, like, make money from this rather than, hey, I actually want to play this game. I think it's the advent of so many games are multiplayer in some, like, way now, and it's it's gone mainstream. It's no longer, like, the nerd culture that's playing games online. It's everybody, so you're getting the bad with the good. Yeah. Because after <sighs> all, I mean... Joel's playing, so there's like all the bad right there. <laughs> all of it. So Joel, yeah. Let's go back to Dark Souls for a second. After our okay. podcast last week, which guys, in case you didn't know, that podcast is now our most downloaded audio podcast ever. It's almost twice as much as the second place podcast. We don't know <laughs> why exactly. I need to get an Excel sheet and start graphing this stuff. But thank you guys, everyone who listened to it. Uh, yeah, that, that was pretty crazy. It did you know. convince me to try Dark Souls. I haven't. I mean, you, you don't have to thank me at once for getting those guys on because we all know Australians is what made the podcast. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you there. All those yeah. sexy voices. I, I, I came for the accents. People I came come here for the freedom, there for the accents. That, that's why I emailed. I was like, I hey, forgot you know, thing. we, we do this podcast. Um, but there's another thing we should have brought up last week when we were comparing why America is so much better. Netflix. Australia doesn't have Netflix. What? Communists! <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. But anyway, so back oh, to Dark Souls 2. Joel, yeah. Yeah. I'm asking you live on the podcast, so if I get a commitment, yeah. everyone will have heard it. If I buy Dark Souls 2, how committed are you to helping me? Um, <laughs> I don't want to give you an answer until the end of the podcast. Okay, you can give me an answer at the end of the podcast. Yeah. And I also have Mark. Mark said he'd help me too. So as soon as he gets it, like if I have two people who are going to help me, I feel like I can give it a shot now. Uh, next news item. AMD has just refreshed their Never Settle program. Uh, their Never Settle program was really awesome. It would give you free AAA games for buying one of their cards. In which That's kind of what made them a much better deal than their NVIDIA counterparts was the cards were performing pretty similarly, usually for less money and with free games. Um, they didn't have that deal for a while because all the Bitcoin miners were buying their cards, so they didn't need any incentives. Yeah. But now I'm, I think that's kind of tapered off a little bit. It's more normal. Like, you can actually find R9 290s for 400 bucks again. So, it's back to being one of the best deals in graphics cards. Um, but can you find them in, st in stock yet? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Nice. In, like, the 4 to 450 range, and then the 290Xs are, like... 550 to 600 right now so it's pretty much msrp right now um but they've got the radeon gold silver and bronze reward programs um you know and they correspond to how nice of a card you buy like if you bar buy an r7 250 and lower you get bronze uh r9 270 or lower you get silver or r9 295 x2 or anything else like 
anything down to the 280, you get gold. Um, and so the gold will give you three free games. Now, what's different last time, what makes this newsworthy, is now they're including indie game packs. So you could get like three AAA games, or you could get three packs of indie games. Um, so they're kind of like... Stuff like Banner Saga, Dad, Guacamele, Tales from Space. Actually, like, really nice indie games that have made a lot of, um, I don't know, made a lot of waves. You can pick those up, or you can pick up things like Tomb Raider, Thief, Murdered, Soul Suspect, stuff like that. So, if but it's on the other buy hand, an indie card. We have Humble Bundle, so... We do have Humble Bundle, which is the thing. Most people already own most of those indie games at this point. Yeah. Um, but if you don't, I mean... Pick them up. You can get one. If you're one of those four people that don't, (laughs) yeah. I think with humble bundles, it's even hard to give away the keys, as you and I have found out. Because if it's a bundle you can get for one cent, pretty much everybody gets it. So, yep. Uh, Okay, Red Orchestra two one day deal. Dave, you want to tell everyone about this as our resident Red Orchestra two fanboy? Is it still live? Um, yeah. Today's the last day. Supposedly. Yeah, Red Orchestra 2 is currently free. If you guys go and add it to your library, like go to the page and hit uh, install, and I will actually look for... You don't get a keep it for life, though. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Are you sure? Because on yes. Steam, it just showed you can play multiplayer for the weekend. That was just free multiplayer. No, it's for life. Really? Uh, Rising okay. Storm is for the weekend. That's the expansion. Uh, okay, it's, got it. it's okay, that's confusing. what I saw. Yeah. Got it. And also installs like four different executables like Rising Storm Beta, Rising Storm Single Player, Rising Storm Slash Red Orchestra 2 Multiplayer. It's a little bit confusing in your library. But get it. It's free. It's amazing. That's I about my the pitch. amazing part. It's, uh, it's real hardcore. Like if you like Insurgency, but you'd like to play Insurgency with World War II weapons, you would probably like Red Orchestra 2. Would you say <laughs> that's fair, Dave? Yeah, and a lot more crawling, and a little bit a of crawling. Same company? It's not the same company. No, no, it's not the no. same company, but it's the same level of intensity, I'd say. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I, I see why people like Red Orchestra 2. I just don't play it enough. Like, I'd have to put so much more time into it to enjoy it. Same thing with Insurgency. It's, exactly. It's fun in spurts, but it's just a lot of the time it's so frustrating because people are sniping you from halfway across the map in one shot. And you have no idea. Like, it, it, it feels like you just can't win. It's it's the same thing that you have with Battlefield, but taken to an extreme where when you first start playing, it's really hard to figure out what's happening to you. There's just so many things in the game that are happening, and people that have been playing are are using weapons, and they know the maps, and you're just kind of thrown in there, and it's confusing. But once you learn how things work, and, and what the sound effects are, and what's what you're dying from, it gets a lot better. It's mm-hmm. a really great experience. I think I would really enjoy that game if we somehow had like 15 or 16 friends. And we just played ourselves. I would really enjoy it. But when I played online, there's just there's so many people. And I don't know. Some people, they don't work with you. And you can't really chat with them. And it's like one of those games that I think you need to actually chat with your teammates. Whether or not for fun, shenanigans, or hardcore. I don't know. I, I, can't, I have a hard time getting into those games. Yeah. All right. Next news item. Project Cars. Have you guys heard of this? I know none of you are huge racing fans. but No, I heard about it. I watched the okay. trailer. Project Cars is a upcoming... Uh, it's, it's in early access on steam right now it's a sim racer so it's like gran turismo plus uh and they have said that uh cars is going to be the best looking driving game ever uh up till this point of course so we are going to now watch the trailer live unfortunately you guys won't be able to see it but everyone else will be able to so i'm going to make that live now and here we go Yay, trailers! Sorry, you guys can't see it. That's right, you could have sent a link, but I can just get imagine cars shiny. They are actually, that's where it's happening right now. It's very shiny. I'm sorry for not sending a link. <laughs> everyone, everyone keeps on uh, saying that they're like, when is a game, a, a video, like a car racing game, ever going to get car rendering correctly? <laughs> it because looks pretty good. It's pretty, but they like always this. make cars like 100% like they're clean while they're driving. Like, no car is that clean. The clear coat gets kind of grimy. <laughs> but yeah, this looks pretty good. You're seeing it on, uh, are you looking at it on YouTube? Uh, no, on Twitch, actually. Okay. It looks, actually, it's broadcasting completely well over Twitch, man. Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell that it's a free broadcast. Ooh, I noticed some very subtle physics going on there on that, that pullout. Oh, the physics are very, um, you would like to under- read about how they do their physics. I want to see the skeleton bone system for their physics, like the, uh, yeah, the, the bones. 
you know, they, they, wow, I mean, like, I'm not a huge fan of sim racing car stuff, just because I feel like you never drive that fast, like, you feel like you're driving fast, even though I know you are, but, um, my favorite racing car game is Dirt, Dirt 2, and Dirt 3, <laughs> those are my favorite ones, I like the, just spinning out the dirt and stuff, but this looks, man, like, yeah, definitely the graphics are insane. Like Even the environments, the environments have a huge draw distance. Like the backgrounds go on like the dice level. <laughs> <laughs> I like the water on the ground or the wet road. That looks yeah, great. that's what I was referring to actually. Oh, okay. I was the... like, did you see like an ocean somewhere? Yeah, they're actually <laughs> underwater right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I, uh... I don't know what cars these are. No clue. They're fast. They're fast cars. Yeah, it looks like looks like sports. You guys have to recognize <laughs> some of those cars, okay? Right? I, I saw, B I saw cars. a BMW in there. You saw a... Oh, jeez. All right. <laughs> I saw a car that had four tires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was going really fast. <laughs> Dave can't, we, I can't tell you about cars. Dave can tell you about any every single blade of grass in DayZ. I can tell you about every single death in Dark Souls. <laughs> And how that grass makes me feel, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you how my controller makes me feel. <laughs> <laughs> we all know how your controller makes you feel. With vibration it's on all, or off. It's always in control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you ever feel like we've just we've played a joke out as far as it's going to go? Then Joel's like, no, 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 guys. Let's drag it back out. Get the bats. Let's beat this thing. <laughs> it's still one of my favorite podcast thumbnails. Joel and the controller heart bubble. <laughs> <laughs> All right. H1Z1, Sony Online Entertainment's upcoming zombie MMO. Uh, they are trying to dispel the notion that they are a DayZ clone while offering up what makes them unique. And even though they're free to play, they maintain that they are not going to suck. Uh, SOE's John Smedley said they had a recent meeting on monetization uh, because it's a free to play game, but of course it still has to make money like every free to play game. Their development costs and stuff. Uh, so this is how they plan on making money. Character customization and wearable items will be up for sale. So these will not be things that give players an edge at all. It's purely cosmetic, which a lot of free-to-play games have done. They will not be selling guns, ammo, food, water, etc. They said they're very clear on that. They will not do that. Uh, but it's going to be... And you'll be able to craft all the things you can buy. You'll be able to craft in the world. So no one will be able to get a totally unfair advantage. I mean, the stuff that they're going to be adding is just going to be cosmetic stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, They also... There's a, a subreddit now for H1Z1. And uh, some people asked some questions about it. So I'm going to ask the questions and then answer them again real quick. Um, here, let me send you guys... Oh, steam popping up in everyone's faces. Let me send you guys this link real quick. Do, do, do. Joel, you're not online. I'm on I'm on Skype. Not on Steam. Oh, I uh, just sent Mac. you a link. Sorry, I'm on Mac. It's alright. Uh, okay, here are the questions. I'll just go will, there. Co will combat be as fast as was shown during the live stream? No, there are a few features coming online that will allow me to start turning tuning for slower combat. This includes things like one-to-one -one head movement, but slower arm movement, ready states for melee, and weapon-specific melee animation sets. Um, hold on one second. I'm curious when they say ready states. I hope they're not doing what Daisy does. It, only if that, they like, do, it, but it works better. Where it fun. does like the hold the axe up, then swing. I don't know. I think that's just that's one extra step. I don't, don't think is needed. But um, I agree with that. Yeah. Like I like how Daisy has the like you know you can put your gun down so it doesn't look like you're always aiming it down the sights. That's fine. Right. I just mean that like it's up. Then you got to put it up. Then you got to swing. But I hope they just mean like just this traditional you're holding it and it's like swinging or something. Uh, other questions: Will zombies die from one headshot from a gun? Uh, yes, but if you have a twenty two or a three eighty, maybe not. But anything else? Yes. Uh, will there be free look, alt look, head turning? Yes. Will there be military spec weaponry in the game? This is Jimmy Wiss, by the way, answering these. He's uh, one of the developers. They've been so quite we, active, too, answering questions on Twitter and yes, on they Reddit. Have been. Yeah, he says, uh, we absolutely will be adding military weapon, weaponry and installations. I'm also not naive enough to assume people wouldn't have made their own modifications or stolen equipment during the collapse of society. 
So go to Dave's house. (laughs) Once again, all of the above will be very rare. Dave is an apex predator, Joel. Uh, All of the above will be very rare. Some weapons and ammo even more than others. In homes, you'll mostly find weapons you could feasibly find in a civilian's house. You'll find some nice AR-15s. Uh, which are semi-auto, shotguns, 1911s, and the like. Very rarely something like a modern M16 with fire select that could have could been stolen or found by the previous occupants. Uh, okay. Other questions. What kind of physical recoil are we going to be seeing? Uh, is it going to be like a meaty visceral type, like Counter-Strike, where there's a consistent pattern you can learn and adapt? Um, I wouldn't say Counter-Strike is meaty or visceral, but... Or is it going to be more like a Battlefield Planet feel... Battlefield planet side style where the recoil is basically uncontrollable after a certain point. Uh, there won't be consistent patterns necessarily. Different weapons will have tendencies to handle certain ways. However, you will not be able to perfectly control each burst or shot. Will weapon care be implemented? Cleaning guns, loading magazines or clips in order for the reload button to work, etc. So we talked about this quite a bit and decided that individually loading magazines is something we didn't want as far as cleaning slash gun care. I really like to do this and have penalties for not doing so. Frequent jamming and the like, eventually rendering the gun useless, stuff like that. Kind of like the Far Cry 2 system. I think is that's Daisy kind of interesting. planning on adding jamming? Kind of like Far Cry 2 had? And cleaning and stuff like that. The cleaning kits are already in game, but not very useful right now. Yeah, they don't really matter right now. Yeah. You can't, you can't clean a ruined gun to function, can you? No. I find it interesting that for H1Z1 that they thought that loading individual magazines was like too real, I guess. And then yet they're going to have cleaning. That seems like I feel like cleaning would be more of an inconvenience than the, the more realistic ammo system. Yeah, I mean, because realistically, an AR-15 can fire for a long time without being cleaned. Longer than most people will live to use it. <laughs> yeah, that's there's probably something gu- you just don't need to even add in. There's a guy on Reddit who, uh, his AR-15, he hasn't cleaned it in a few thousand rounds, and when it starts to jam, he dumps some motor oil into the chamber and works the bolt and then keeps shooting. <laughs> Is it just an experiment at this point? Basically, yeah. He's like, yeah, it just I just run it wet, and it uh, it smells bad, but it runs. <laughs> Wait, the oil doesn't, like, catch on fire? I, I may I don't know all the details, but okay. he uses he uses motor oil to lubricate it. For I, don't, I guess I don't know how flammable motor oil is. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I, I hope he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, the guy dumping oil into the bolt of his AR-15. He sounds like he really knows what he's doing. Um, okay, how detailed will bullet physics be? For example, will there be bullet drop? Will accuracy be determined by a cone of fire system? The bullet physics will be as close to realistic mass slash travel slash feet per second as possible without getting in the way of understanding how your gun works in the game. Yes, this includes shotguns. Cone of fire will not be the deciding factor in accuracy. We do have a something cylinder of fire system that will spread a bit. However, no, nowhere near as far as you'd expect from a cone of fire in most games. I think what they're trying to say is the guns will be pretty accurate. Yeah. Uh, will player headshots <clears throat> with a sufficiently powerful weapon, such as a 1911 or AR-15, be a one-hit kill? Yes. And will there be swopes, scope sway in the game? Uh, I said they'd like to tie scope sway to their stamina system as well as other factors. So, what are your thoughts? I know Dave, you're not super pumped about H1Z1 just because you're a you know a DayZ fanboy. But uh, what do you? I mean, what do you guys think about this thing? I want to hear Joel's thoughts first. Um, I am super excited that a really big company is trying to tackle it. I mean, this is the company that built um, Star Wars Galaxy, which was a great game. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was the MMO. I, I only played a little bit of it. It was kind of um, almost a little bit before my time when I was really getting into PC stuff. Or, like, I, I wasn't really into MMOs, but everyone I've talked with said it was a great game. Um, but I think just the engine that they're starting to build it on is a great engine, and I think it has a huge potential to be a really well-made game. And I think having two games like Daisy and this pushing each other to really put polish into it because as i was thinking even earlier today like what i would love to see daisy have is that you know like remember in far cry 3 when you get your hand wound and you'd like wrap their hand up but it was like i feel like i'll never ever play daisy and ever feel like i'll have that polish where he'll pull up a hand he'll wrap a bandage or he'll do it against his leg kind of like an even left for dead um i just don't think daisy will ever get to that kind of level of polish i think certain parts of it will be really polished but it'll never feel like that like triple a game it always feel like just an indie game um i mean it may surprise me but i i have huge doubts that it's going to feel like that but i'm excited that some other company is going to try to do those things that maybe daisy's missing right now so i think they're both going to push each other to make just great games and stuff so 
in different ways. And I'm excited for America. <laughs> like, I'm excited for, like, an American-type villain, like, you know, area to explore. When does it come out? They said four weeks from last Thursday. Okay. For early access. For early yeah. access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, yeah. you'll yeah, have to pay for. Yeah. Wait, will you have to pay for it? It's free to play. Early uh, access. It's $20. Yeah. Hmm. They said they're doing that because they do they do need money to be able to develop it because they're a side company of Sony doing this. It's a huge risk for them just as, as well because they're allowing them to make the game, but they're also not sure if they can actually like if – if it's going to make money as well. So they're doing that because it's going to help feed their development, and then once it's actually done, it's going to be free for everyone. Hmm. I think it's fine. Now, this is Sony Online Entertainment. Do they really need the money for development, or, or is that just to keep the well? They do have play people out. an entire Planet Side Two that I honestly don't think is doing that well. <laughs> like it's not. Like it, I mean, I think it's a great it's game, okay, but it's just, but it's, it's not, like it's just it's probably not it's not a mainstream anything. type of game. Yeah. Um, really. But it's also twenty dollars. It's not thirty dollars that Daisy was a little overpriced for Alpha. I no, so. that, that was on purpose. There was definitely oh. a purpose behind that price. They wanted that. So well, that it, did, well, it didn't work, though. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. It, there was a purpose behind it, but it's still it way work. too overpriced everyone, for Alpha. Everyone bought it anyway. All right, so here are my thoughts on H1Z1. Um, I've been saying for a few years now that we need a more casual version of DayZ, hopefully done by a big studio. Obviously, uh, the War Z was not it. That was a horrific cash grab that I will forever be bitter about. <laughs> um, so finally... This actually sounds like it has some potential. Planet Side 2 is fun. I haven't played it in a while. But the engine's good. The team is experienced. And I think this has a lot of potential. From the live stream, most of what I saw actually looked pretty great. I mean, it's it's pre-alpha. Keep that in mind. But the combat, the melee looked good. The vehicles, of course, I mean, it's Planet Side 2 engine. It, the vehicles were awesome with the ragdolls and all. But uh, for me, it, the main thing that really bothered me about the live stream was the environment, actually. The environment did not feel like an actual place. And it felt like a map that had been randomly generated like in their map editor with maybe some some base height map functions and then kind of sculpted from there. It just it had lots of lots of flat open places and none of the none of the terrain really flowed together like you would expect this this area of America to flow together. It doesn't feel like a real place to me. The only and thing is, the, imagine if Daisy decided to make a map in the future that's not based on anything and it's just a complete 100% made up world would that sway your differences on Daisy though just because yeah. it's not 100% real well there's tons of Daisy maps that are like that yeah, they're just and, not official and with the exception of Namalsk I didn't really play any of those for long just because they felt like game maps to me and obviously Daisy has the advantage of Trinares being developed for years and years and years now off of very, yeah. very accurate satellite imagery and stuff like that. So to me, Trinares has always felt like an actual place, even with the kind of subpar Arma 2 graphics. I'm just hoping that they can do some more work on not just the detailing of H1Z1's world, but just how the terrain is sculpted to make it feel like a like an actual landscape. It just felt very yeah. gamey in the live stream. I'm hoping their world actually kind of looks a little Alan Wakey. That's what yeah. I'm hoping for. That I would work. love to have an Alan Wake looking area to survive in, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, I'm really curious to see how, how far it's going to be along in four weeks. So um, it sounded like there was a bunch they didn't want to show us in the stream that they already been working on. So I'm curious to know how much they'll have. You know, I'm excited to play it. Just I'm excited. To, I'm really excited for just lots and lots and lots of zombies and just being able to drive in a car and crush zombies and stuff. Because that game State of Decay, if it was online, oh, yes. like, even four people. I, th I would play that more than Daisy right now just because it would be so much fun playing with people. I would be in my sheriff's cruiser with the light bar yeah. on just running down the infected. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, you can board with up Joel walls, the... houses, grab yeah. tons of loot. I don't know. It's just – it's fun. That's what I – so, anyways. Funky <laughs> Fresh points out that there will also be horses, which is exciting. That would be awesome. Horses are cool. I think horses for Daisy have kind of gotten shelved. Like they're not officially on the roadmap. It's one of those like, if one of our team members has time to work on horses, we'll do it. But until we get to that point, we're not going to say like horses are part of our roadmap. <laughs> can, can you imagine what it's going to be like the first time they get a horse and the animation to get on? You're not going to like climb over. It won't. No, no animations. Your character will just kind of slide like whoop up onto it. <laughs> It'll have the physics of the Skyrim horses. <laughs> yeah. You'll be on those cliffs near Svetlo, like walking straight up. 
I, what if they I always thought it'd be awesome if you could make a horse in a game but it actually had more like car physics so when you run and get enough speed and you run up you just ramp <laughs> instead of like going, you just like whoop <laughs> oh man alright Dizzy Patch Changelog Dave would you like to run this discussion here stable or experimental and which week <laughs> and uh, maybe, maybe keep to the more interesting topics that other people might like Dave <laughs> New stuff that, that's that's hit experimental. The stuff we're we're playing on a lot. I know Joel is so excited about this, so I got to talk about it. Jeremiah, just hold on to your seat. There is a new green ash tree model in the game right now. You can log on. Wait, and sorry. Explore um, by ash tree, a tree. You're talking about green a tree. ash tree model. <laughs> right, right. Like a, an ash tree. <laughs> I'm not sure what there is, is a model we've never <laughs> seen before. Is that what you're like, telling me? Dave said, there's a green ass tree. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Green ass. Green ash. Oh, man. Uh, no, that's not that exciting. Uh, it'll be exciting eventually once they replace more of the armor to vegetation, just overall, because a lot of those, like, the kind of fall orange trees have some horrific looking texture billboards that, like, are cross sections with, like, these low res, blurry textures. And when you're 30 feet away, they pop in the billboard level of detail model where it's, like, two flat intersecting planes. Mm -hmm. um, compare that to the trees in Arma 3 or even like the couple dead ones they've added to Daisy, and they look so much better. So here's hoping for a complete vegetation overhaul like the grass and the couple of trees. But anyway, moving past trees that I was not actually going to talk about, <laughs> the crossbow is now unstable, and we just went experimenting with that uh, was it cool. last night, actually. Yeah. I was telling Joel today, I was always so sad in the mod that the crossbow never got actually finished, never had sights, never had final textures. Its firing mechanism was like you you have the bolt that takes up the entire slot in your inventory and then you load it onto the crossbow and it fires this like invisible glitchy bullet thing was your was your crossbow. But in Daisy Standalone, it's got physics. It sticks into walls. You actually load the quiver and then attach it to the crossbow. It's got the super cool like double finger pullback. And the sound is really, really cool too, like the the twang and the whistle of the of the bolt. It's a really awesome weapon, and I hope I might actually use it for a while, just because uh, it's awesome to see it finished finally. I was always sad that it never got finished. Other patch notes: um, that new mountain town did not get added in because one of the environment artists forgot to add his changes to the patch build the night before. <laughs> And they actually posted the patch notes of the new town, and it was not actually there. A couple of people ran north to find it and just found empty roads. But um, the main reason that the stable patch got pa got pushed this week was two major gameplay changes. One-to-one -one mouse controls and the genuine verified network notifications, which cut Daisy's bandwidth by like 90%. <laughs> Which cuts down on the desync. So, what do you guys think of those two major changes to the gameplay? I think even Joel, you've played some with the with the mouse controls, right? Oh yeah, I mean it's a world of a difference. It's like, thank you, finally you've you've gotten up to today's standards. It was just, it was like, yeah, I feel like you're uh, in control of where you're looking. And it was the worst when you walked inside of a building and you turned, and for some reason, like because of the environment you're around or something, your mouse would go faster or slower. Yep, it was, it it was just the most bizarre thing. <laughs> I told Dave, I said, if they can just hammer out a little bit more controls when you walk your character has this little delay to it like when i go up to a house to like get to a, to a door i end up running too far or running too you know stopping too short if they can like quick i can't control they, my body yeah, if they can tweak that by even like 25 percent, it's going to be really really close because i'm okay with a little slight delay of that kind of you know realism feel but if it's just a little bit closer tighter controls it's going to be great uh, I have to say, I'm actually something positive the about DZ. <laughs> benefits of the desync issues. I'm having all kinds of de of desync issues. We picked a horrible server last night. I haven't seen a server that, that it bad was a, in for a pretty ever. bad server. But I wouldn't say I've seen tons of benefits from desync yet. Like stuff still feels pretty desynced most of the time, and it may just because the experimental servers running the new messaging system are getting hammered with traffic. So it might be like one of those things where you're not really going to see the benefit till they hit stable. Oh, it's, it's on stable. Um, we were on stable last night with it, but it was on the oh, crappy server. Oh, it's a horrible server. stable server. Yeah. yeah. And that's I the only know. one we've played on since the patch came out, so that was a bad... Yeah. But Joel, at least I, I'd say so far... Microphone. <laughs> yeah, please stop doing that. Sorry. Um, 
that's the problem with having that aluminum bodied MacBook Air is that it transmits all of the Unlike sound. your mechanical keyboards of Doom. Which doesn't go. Oh, that's what it sounds maybe. like when you're typing. I did, oh, you know, I'm going to try to put a mouse pad underneath the mic. I wonder if that would help yeah. me. All right, type some now. Okay, ready? And typing. It's just as bad. Really? Get a big fluffy towel. Okay. Big fluffy towel. All right, I'll go just get one. I'll just not type or type really. Can you hear me just type go, now? I'm go, typing no, like secretly. Right now. <laughs> like right now, go get a big fluffy towel. Okay, I'm getting a fluffy towel. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the actually the mouse controls for a second, I, I think one key thing to, to point out here was that it wasn't like they just put off doing new mouse controls for months and months. It's that there was a purpose in Arma 2 for the negative mouse acceleration, and that was that they wanted to give your weapons a weight to them so that it couldn't be like Battlefield where you can do like a 360 and your weapon is right there. Like I was trying to record Edgar's first person perspective in Battlefield last night on spectator mode to get some cinematic footage. But Edgar is a Twitch FPS player. And because Battlefield has one-to-one mouse controls, it doesn't look good. He's like spinning around and it's very, very gamey looking. And for DayZ, which is more of a simulator, they wanted your weapons to have weight still. So they've added one-to-one mouse controls where your look now does 100% follow your mouse but if you have a longer rifle, like a Mosin Nagant, you're going to notice your weapon kind of pulling behind as your, your character like brings it to bear. And I actually hope that system gets ported to Arma 3 because it looks and feels really, really good. It's a little subtle, but um, like so many things in Daisy Standalone, I like that they're taking the time to, to make these fixes the right way instead of just saying like, oh, no, everyone hates the mouse controls. Just scrap it all. They went back to the drawing board and said, we need to have the weapon weight. We need to have better mouse controls. Let's get somewhere in the middle there. They're doing things correct once again. And uh, other things they fixed, you can catch rain by holding a bottle in your hand. That is super old. When people load in, uh, the server no longer plays the reloading sound effects. Um, How long does it take to catch rain? (laughs) Because that would take forever in real life. Like, forever. (laughs) I'm dying if there's a... (laughs) You'd try it, though. Well, it takes less time than, than being dehydrated to death takes. Um, anyway, there's a, <laughs> bunch of, there's a bunch of other small little changes, so we don't need to talk about all of them. Go play the game. I think of more but, interest is the dev blog. Okay, would you like to run us through the dev blog? Uh, big news as far as the environment goes. We're getting a city that's the size of Chernogorsk in the far north, nestled kind of in the mountain valleys, uh, northwest of Black Fields, which is northwest of the Northeast Airfield, if that's confusing enough for directions. It's going to be in the far north, kind of centered on the map, basically. It's going to be a town that fills this entire mountain valley and then kind of goes up into the second mountain valley. So it'll be nice to have like an actual huge, huge city in the north besides Berezino, which is currently overrun with campers and new spawns. <laughs> They posted um, a small image of what the, the map looked like, and Dave figured out exactly where it was. They didn't tell you where it was. No. Dave figured out exactly. He lined it up on the actual Daisy map. All the roads aligned. Well, I mean, I spent four hours doing a video where I explored the unfinished part of the map, so it was pretty easy for me to like recognize the roads. That's kind of sad. <laughs> sounds like a really fun Saturday afternoon. Did you Tuesday, take a day off for that? It was a snow day. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Good use of a snow day. <laughs> Exciting news for graphics whores like us PC gamers over here. Uh, they're currently working on pulling the graphics renderer in this version of the um, the real virtuality engine, pulling the graphics renderer off of the simulation and part of the engine. They want to split that, get all of the the time, the inventory management, all that stuff, completely uncoupled from the graphics pipeline, basically. And what that would allow them to do is continue development on the back end of the game while adding things like DirectX 11 support to the graphics side of things, which would really help with the uh, the city lag and with just the look of the game. They could add more volumetric fog, softer lighting and shadows, all kinds of stuff like that that you see in Arma 3 could come out of that. And Dean said on Reddit today that he doesn't want to talk a lot about that because... They're still in the stage where it's like they're working towards that goal, but they don't know how well it's going to work. It could make a huge difference and they could have like crazy, amazing uh, render changes and the game could look better than Arma 3 in six months. Or they could get like a five FPS boost and then that's about it. You know, they don't know what the results are going to be yet, but that's their goal. Um, 
And exciting news for that new studio. They got hired on that, what is it, like 35, 40 guys at that mm-hmm. new Bohemia Satellite Studio. Right. They're already working on zombie pathfinding, zombie AI, the new animals, the new animal AI. And their team has a 64-bit version of the Daisy server executable compiling already. Which, as far as I know, not even Arma 3 has a 64-bit server executable. And that should give um, the developers... Memory. Uh, yeah, just tons of overhead. Like, welcome to 2014 kind of thing. And on the just loot side of things, they're working on a hunting pistol, which Joel had no idea that hunting pistols even existed. So Joel's learning things uh, this week. The AKM is coming very soon, as well as the MP5K, our first submachine gun. So we're getting loot, tons of rendering. hunting machine guns? <laughs> Because that would be awesome. Instant ground beef. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, basically they're hitting a multi-pronged approach here in Daisy as usual. And there's just tons of stuff going on uh, behind the scenes. Go read the blog. Look at the pictures. There's a picture of a pig on there. DaisyDev.tumblr.com Dave, I had a a question. Um, Yeah. I bet you probably answer this. Would there? Do you think there would ever be a chance that Daisy could possibly run into a huge problem because of the engine they're running on that it goes crap? It's gonna basically be as it is. And I'm not saying the graphics. I mean, graphics are fine right now. If it, they stay like this forever, it's fine. You mean content? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm saying the content um, and how the graphics look right now. But I'm saying could would they could they ever get completely locked with like crap? We can't utilize any more RAM. We can't utilize any more of this. They're, like we're stuck. You think would that ever be a possibility, or because of the amount of people they have and because it's making money, they could? push it farther just because they have the you know the, the bandwidth to be able to go okay let's just it it's not gonna be the best way but we're just gonna crank the crap out of this thing and push it really hard you know joel i actually was wondering the same thing before launch you know there's a lot of talk before the alpha came out of they're sticking with the armor 2 engine because it's what the base of the mod was built on is that a good idea you know are they gonna hit like that concrete wall where they just can't do anything else yeah i don't think so actually um we talked about just now the 64-bit executable for the servers. Dean replied to a Reddit comment and said, yeah, we're excited about that. It's going to open up some new doors for us. But he's like, at the same time, we've gotten so good at making our, our memory efficient. He's like, we're well below that 2 gig limit on the server right now. He's like, we already have a ton of room for expansion. So this just like knocks the ceiling even further. Uh, and plus, they have the two guys who wrote the original engine in the late 90s for, um, what was the game, Jeremiah? Uh, for- Operation Flashpoint. Okay. Mm -hmm. The two guys who wrote the original engine uh, still work at Bohemia and have been a big part of this process of doing things like adding that that weather system into the game from Arma 3. So at this point, with enough time and with the definite amount of money they've made, they can get under the hood. And I think the sky really is the limit. It's really just a matter of time, I think, Joel, at this point. It kind of reminds me of almost like how console development is where, you know, they're, they're kind of stuck with they're stuck with this thing. But then they go, okay, how can we push out more power with what we have? Yeah. Um, just because I know, I know Dean's already been. T- he's already talked with Sony and stuff about trying to push Daisy to that. And I'm like, you know, there's no chance they're going to push it to a PS4 unless they can do some sort of optimization. You know, because yeah. the game's not graphically that intensive. It's mostly intensive because it doesn't utilize much. You know. But I was like, I would, love to, I would love to be able to play it on huge that. Yeah. Limitation yeah, right yeah. I was like, that's that's going to be the huge thing. So I was, I was they, just curious. I was like, that would suck if they he got yeah, like yeah. crap. Nope, it's 32 bit, and that's all we have until Daisy two. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely are not the first person to ask that, Joel. I I was wondering the same thing last year, but uh, I've been impressed with all the things that people said that, like, you can't do it on this engine. Like, you'll never have a fluid inventory. You'll never have a good-looking weather system like rain and all. You'll never have building interiors. And here we are seeing it come in slowly, but bit by bit it's happening. Yeah. Well, that's hopeful news. All right. That's that story. So, uh... We actually have a couple more things tonight. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter podcast. Uh, I wanted to briefly, brief, briefly, briefly, uh, touch back in on Patreon, which we talked about last week. Uh, we've gotten a fair amount of feedback from you guys. Of course, more is always welcome. But I feel like we can tell you at this point we are considering Patreon. Would you say that's fair, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty heavily considering it. Um, we have some Patreon. ideas. <laughs> yeah, 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 we've come up with some ideas that we think could actually make the podcast better, and it would be supported by you guys. So um, the first thing would be just like funding the costs of the podcast, which are very minimal, but 
that'd be the first goal would be like the podcast no longer loses money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then after that, you'll know, be other stuff, but um, we're still talking about stuff because we wouldn't want any of this to be a cash grab. We wouldn't want the user experience to be diminished for anyone who wasn't paying money, anything like that. So we're still talking about it. Be on the lookout for further updates, but just so you guys know, in the interest of full disclosure, we are very, very heavily considering moving to that system sometime soon. I think the key for us is we want to have a really good reward system set up so that you guys are getting some cool stuff back for supporting us, not just like, oh, the podcast continues. Like, we exactly. want to, to let you guys uh, dive in and get some cool stuff back. Exactly. And that's the hard part is we have to come up with stuff we can actually do extra. Like, all of us have the issue. I'm trying to think of a way to say this. It doesn't sound like elitist says a member of the pc master race (laughs) well we're all we're all busy like youtube is not a second job for me it's like a third job you know that that rarely gets as much time as it needs and you know joel inside from his day job makes movies (laughs) and dave is a 3d modeler and does freelance and stuff like we don't have loads of time to throw at we're going to do 10 exclusive live streams a month and stuff <laughs> say like Dave, that. Like, I'd say Dave has the most time seeing that he spent four hours in Daisy by himself looting. See, Dave <laughs> has weird he priorities. He could have been streaming. <laughs> Joel, the key is you just don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> You just Dave also drinks coffee. Yeah, what you do yeah, is you, you just replace about ten percent of your blood with pure black coffee, <laughs> and then you just don't sleep anymore. I'll yeah, just prop that, that sense. You awesome. replace your blood with pure black. Guys, guys, <laughs> you, you tar heroin. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> mm, you can do it all, guys, as long as you're okay with dying at thirty. <laughs> so I've got two years. No, less than two years. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> I'll live for a long time. I'm young. I still want our like thousand dollar Patreon uh like level to be if we hit that thousand dollars. For a thousand dollars, we'll get a fire axe and go over to Joel's house, like handcuff him to a chair <laughs> and smash all of his consoles and then oh, buy him. I thought, it, I thought it was getting sexy there for a second, but I mean, he went you went more the murderous route. <laughs> We're talking the blade end of the axe, Joel. The blade end. <laughs> <laughs> Joel's eyes looked so hopeful there for a minute. <laughs> Wistful, even. Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> so, moving on. I don't really know where to go now. <laughs> I, like, I have, uh, I have two not things, my controllers. <laughs> All right, what's your things, Joel? I, I told you, you already forgot. No, I. We're on a live show. Everyone else doesn't know. I'm asking you to set them up. No, I know. I know that. I'm just saying. Okay, I thought you were. No, I hadn't forgotten. I was. It's a. (laughs) It was going to be a real smooth transition. Good job, Joel. You've derailed this. It didn't sound like you were transitioning at all. It just sounds like you were like, oh, we're getting ready to wrap. Why don't you tell us what thing you have to talk about? (laughs) Well, thanks, Jeremiah, for uh, for introducing me. I have a couple things. I have a exclusive clip. From Norman. I mean, you have an exclusive magazine. <laughs> Never gets old. It's an exclusive 30-second magazine to show you guys. All right. So um, you want me to bring that up and play it? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, this is from – all the filming is done for the movie now. And I just decided to just take a few little clips from what we shot for the last the last three weeks. And this is the stuff I'm editing. So this is the new stuff. So, yeah. Dave, do you have a cue, Dave? Uh, I do. Yeah. All right. Ready? Yep. In three, two, one. Oh, there's like no audio. <coughs> yeah, it's no audio. It's just I just wanted to show some clips. Oh, but, the video uh, froze. It's playing now. <laughs> the video is being super choppy. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to restart it. Okay. I had it queued for so long. I think the hard drive it was on went to sleep. Have you uh, overclocked yet, Jeremiah? All right, here it goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, I'm in All here. Right. I'm a movie star. <laughs> Now, Dave, you're talking ahead of what people are going to be seeing live. You jerk. Uh, I think I think Jeremiah is freaking out a little bit on my side. Freaking out a little bit. What does that mean? I'm gonna go back and re-add this in like later. Just add the raw clip in. If you're using Windows Media Player, there you go. It defaulted to that. Oh, okay. There you go. Now I can hear you guys. It was like glitching out for a second. Uh, that wasn't us. That's all you. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the man. video's not playing super smooth. I'm sorry, guys. I I brought it up and then paused it, and then normally that's not an issue, but stuff's being weird. No, I, I think that's when you're trying to play video. Right. I'm saying I think 
that's not a normal thing. I think because I had brought it up and had it paused for so long, like the hard drive went to sleep and having ah. trouble getting back up and going. It's worth mentioning. I'm also capturing Skype, re-encoding and live streaming to Twitch and recording using <laughs> DX Tori for a backup feed. So, I mean, I'm doing a lot. Uh, in regards to what Dave said about the um, the overclocking, I'll just touch on that briefly. I tried to do a processor upgrade. The guy shipped me a broken processor and it didn't work. So I went back to my old one. My overclock was ridiculously unstable because I had to reset the CMOS. I forgot some of my original settings. I've been slowly inching it back up. I'm actually only at four gigahertz right now. I'm not up to 4.5 where I was because the pro- it's stable, but it was getting like high 80s mm. in temperature because my, the bearing in my hybrid 212's fan has been wearing out for a little while. The bearing finally went, so I just grabbed whatever fan I had sitting around, put the brackets on it, and slapped it on there. And it's a scythe, very, very quiet fan, but it's moving like a third of the air as the old one. So I just can't cool the processor down that much now, and I don't want to run that much voltage to keep it stable at 4.5. I have another, I have a Noctua fan on the way, one of those Noctua fans that's really popular for replacing on Hyper 212. Camper money. <laughs> and uh, once that gets here, uh, I, I'm either going to set it up just in place of the other one, or I can get another set of brackets and set up like a push-pull on either side of the heat sink, which is a cool thing the Hyper 212 lets you do. So we'll see what I do. Um, but yeah, so I'm at 4 gigahertz, Dave. Uh, what's your second thing, Joel? Uh, well, the, the clip didn't play, right? It wasn't working? No, no, it did. It oh, did. it did? Oh, okay. I, I restarted it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I restarted it. Okay, cool. Um, well, the second thing is <laughs> I I have three questions for you guys. Okay? It's for you and Dave. All right? Why are and you're, you, you're, you're going to want like that, Joel? I'm just saying you're going to want to do really well at this, Okay. I was hoping if you're asking this like you do in Daisy. You're gonna you're gonna wanna. It'd be like a great idea if you just did what I said. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you do poorly, <laughs> like nothing bad's gonna happen. But you probably shouldn't do poorly. <laughs> but I need the help of the audience to see which one is better. Who? Have you, which one of you guys are better at this? Okay. Should I, if so, I need to go to the bathroom, should I do that now? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll just I'll vamp about Norman. Okay, vamp about Norman for a second because this this seems like this is gonna take. Maybe a little while, and I want to have all my mental facts. Okay, okay. To rumble. So you're gonna need right all back. that. <laughs> Joel, where did you render this clip to? I'm I'm curious because I'm getting some weird playback issues myself. Really? It's no, I'm I'll, I'm playing on mine. It works fine. I just did a the, the codec you made for Vimeo. It's MP4 high okay. quality. It's the same one that you did. Uh, just try copying it from Dropbox. That's probably the problem. Maybe. Well, Dropbox is on my storage drive. It shouldn't be an issue. Oh, that's. Oh, that's weird. I don't know. Yeah, uh, what happened was I, I paused it and then restarted it, and it like was going at two two x speed for some reason. I'm not sure. Huh. That's yeah. That's really weird. Ah, it looks looks fine on mine. Um. Yeah. These new scenes were really fun to shoot, and I don't know if you if you guys got to see it, but Dave's actually in a very small. Uh, yeah, it's actually not that small of a role. It was. I got to yell he at did, people. He got to yell at people. <laughs> Dave did a really good job. So. Aww. He did better than I thought. I was actually preparing for, not great. And I honestly prepare for that for most people that I work with just because if they're not straight actors and used to doing it, you just kind of have to work with whatever you can get because you'd be surprised by how bad some people will be. <laughs> but Dave surprised me <laughs> really well. Okay, and this is actually from James, right? James sent me a text earlier uh, um, and we were laughing so hard. When we were doing this scene, we needed Dave to get angry. And so James kept on I was I was focusing on focusing and making sure I had the shot right, and James is beside me watching the performance, and he's he's like, no, Dave, you, you need to be more intense. You got to be angry. He's like, use your authoritative voice, <laughs> <laughs> and and we realize, you know, since since we shoot it, we have to record the audio later, right? Yeah, Dave, you're gonna have to come back and record your lines for that, okay? Oh man, yeah, and 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 it's James is like, I know how we can get a realistic, angry feel for Dave. Let's put posters of like War Z, the like the guy who <laughs> owns War Z, H one Z one, pixelated like DZ footage, like really pixelated footage, just consoles, Xbox around you, make you hold a controller the whole time. <laughs> just, just make me play Dark Souls two on an Xbox three sixty again. <laughs> I I might run you through with a sword, but, you know, (laughs) in real life. Uh, All right. So what are we talking about? Jeremiah, can you actually play the clip again for people who haven't haven't seen it yet? uh, Yes. Let me bring it up. I was saying DLC or something, please. (laughs) All right. What type of – is it – oh, it's MP4. I was about to ask you if it was like an MOV or something I asked the same thing because it it was plain weird on mine too, but – 
But, uh, <laughs> All right, here we go, no, VLC. I, I was telling Dave, or I was just saying that James said that once we have to re, because we have to re-record Dave's kind of yelling on the scene. Remember that the scene we shot, right? Yeah. Um, and I was like, James is like, we could easily get him angry, put a bunch of War Z and like infestation, <laughs> like <laughs> images in front of him, make him hold a controller. <laughs> Sergi is my game developer yeah, hero. Yeah. Say it, Dave, say it. it no, I guys, I hate you. <laughs> I have to talk about this too. Like I spent a lot of time on my, my costume. Like my, my wife helped me like do all these patches and stuff on the jeans. And I bought some gear from Amazon and stuff um, for the costume. And then uh, Joel surprised me with talking about he ordered this what sounded to be this really cool prop M1911 for my pistol for the scene. And that fit me pretty well because I used to carry a full-size 1911. And then we get out there on the day of the shoot to film the scene. And Joel's like digging through all of his giant prop boxes and he can't find the 1911. So I had to shoot the scenes with like this crappy airsoft like SIG. <laughs> I was just, I was so disappointed. Wait, are you seeing... SIGs are not crappy. SIGs are like no. some of the best handguns you can buy. Yes, but this airsoft version of the SIG looked oh, pretty oh, awful. Oh, the fake SIG. The fake SIG wasn't up to the specs of the real $1,000 <laughs> gun. It's, it's You're fake, correct. It's fake functioning and all. It just, I it was just waiting for Dave to walk off set like, it ain't real. <laughs> <laughs> the people will know. <laughs> Joel, had you found that yet? That, that prop pistol that was no, missed? No, I, I, I literally looked everywhere. It was so weird. It was in a box getting ready to go out with all our supplies and stuff. And it I just, saw it. Just, it definitely existed. This isn't one of those like, Joel goes was, crazy things. It was so weird. It was there. So it's still I, out there somewhere. I, I have no idea. Oh, uh, yeah. That was <laughs> – Joel. I, it was funny. I had to kept on telling Dave. I was like, Dave, you can put your finger on the trigger. You got to put your finger on the trigger. Like you got to make sure you are aiming and getting ready to shoot because you kind of like hold it down a little bit. Like didn't want to aim at someone. <laughs> it felt weird at first. To, to yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah, it does. That yeah. felt good. <laughs> <laughs> then I got into it. <laughs> yeah, Joel, I just just take comfort in the fact that, that that Prop 1911 is probably in the bad part of town right now being used to rob convenience stores. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a pretty good chance. <laughs> Let's just be honest here. All right, Joel, so what are these questions you have for us? Okay. All right, you guys ready for this? The first, I'm going to ask one at a time to each of you guys. It's just three questions. It's nothing to be crazy, all right? And based on these questions, we'll see who wins, okay? And wins what? What are we I'll what tell you doing? afterwards. I'll tell you afterwards. I'll tell I you don't know what we're doing. But just Shut you're up. gonna wanna do well. You're gonna wanna do well. Okay? <laughs> you're gonna wanna do well. <laughs> you're gonna wanna do so well. <laughs> okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm what? writing down a prediction on this envelope. You're writing down a prediction? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Number one. Hold on, hold on, oh. hold on, hold on. Because I got to see if I'm right. I'm writing the prediction down. For what? Each it's one of these on questions? The, it's on the back of this envelope. Okay. I am laying it down. I will keep my hands visible. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> right here. Okay. I just want to see if I'm right. I just want to see if I'm right. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay. All right. Question number one. This will be for Jeremiah. If you could successfully market any item or surface... Or service, sorry. What would it be and why? You have 30 seconds. Go. Hold on. Hold, uh, hold on. I got to re-ask you the question before you start my time. Make sure oh. I heard it correctly. Okay. Uh, can you say it w one more time? <clears throat> if you could successfully market any item or service, what would it be and why? Go. If I could successfully market any item or service. Uh, a service. Okay. I've always wanted to create a nonprofit full of graphic designers, such as ourselves, graphic designers, videographers, web designers, things like that, who would go to nonprofits who can't afford to market themselves in a good way, who have a good, uh, a good, whatever you want to call it, a good mission, but they can't get their word out to find supporters. And we would do everything pro bono or for donations. And we would exist on donations. Uh, and that's how we would do it. Awesome. All right, Dave, ready? I need longer than 30 seconds. <laughs> Go, Dave. Mine is a bit stereotypical, but I'd like to do some sort of work to help people get into PC gaming and break down some of the misconceptions about it and help people get started out on the entry level of things and figure out that it's not as hard as it looks. Because we get a lot of questions on the podcast about stuff that people are just unfamiliar with. So that's it for me. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was a, that was a judgy sound. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> All right. Everyone, then. hold 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 Big your uh, hold your vote till the end. Do not say anything because it's going to help persuade who who wins here. Dave, just so we're clear, you have a loaded gun accessible, <laughs> just in case this goes south. 
<laughs> number two. You do. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Pull the monitor. <laughs> now we're going to start with Dave on this one since Jeremiah went first. Number two. If you could solve one of the world's problems, what would it be and why? And go. Uh, for a serious problem, I would actually say the clean water initiatives that are becoming a thing nowadays. Like, you used to not hear a lot about that, how in large parts of the world that clean water is, like, really, really hard to get a hold of. And it spreads disease. And it's a really horrific problem. And if I could do some work in that area, I think that's a really exciting movement that I've seen get more notice over the last few years. Is that topical? I don't know what yep. I'm doing here. No, it is. Let's no, that's a, great, <laughs> that's a great answer. I think that's probably a better answer than mine. Can I go now? Can I? Wait. And ready for it? Okay. Go. Okay, first of all, Dave's answer is really, really great. If I was going to do something different than that, uh, I think this would take a longer time to see the benefits, but overall, this would have a really awesome effect. It'd be develop ways to get money out of politics, not just in America, but in many <laughs> other countries. Because if you want to affect world change long term, you need to pull companies who seek to profit on other people's suffering out of the lawmaking game. So that's that's who I would target and try to figure out ways to, yeah, pull money out of politics uh, in a long-term hey. sustainable uh, way. Done. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> no, you're yeah, good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Just writing down my... Okay. Last what is, question. What is going on here? I don't know. <laughs> Number three. You just pretend you guys are on, uh, what do you call it, the, what is the show with all the women, the Miss America, that you're on, you're on. <laughs> That's something I've thought about before. <laughs> Should we just go with, like, like Dragon's Den or something, where you're pitching yeah, your well, idea? Yeah. Well, that Shark was the first Tank? question. The second, mean, yeah, the first question yeah, was, sorry, like, Yeah, sorry, Dragon's Den's Tank. the Canadian version. Second question was oh. more, like, Miss America. Now, the last one, this one is kind of spilling a little bit into different dangerous territory, okay? <laughs> last question, who would like to go first? <laughs> Not it. <laughs> oh, go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Number three, and you got to put some oomph in on this one, okay? You walk into a bar and you see me at the counter <laughs> and you are very attracted to me. <laughs> what would be your winning pickup line? Oh, <laughs> I only have to take a moment. Take, take a moment. Take a moment. Take a moment. Okay, okay. okay I got to take a moment. I can't. I can't think of this under pressure. So what's what's, what's my winning pickup line? Yeah. Um, oh, oh! I, this is one of those things. Like as soon as you ask me, I'm gonna start blanking. Oh, Dave can start googling it. He has an advantage. Um, <laughs> no googling. No googling. I, I know what I'm gonna say already. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure yet. I'm not 100 percent sure. So I, I need to have a line, right? Can, can I just go, Joel? Yeah. <laughs> if, if Dave's got it, let him go. Let him go. No, no, I, I, you were supposed to, you, you were going to go first. All right. You, you got to do right. it. This I'm is like, ready, I'm, I'm on the spot. Okay, okay, okay fine, oh. fine. Dave, Dave, okay, go. All right, go. all right. Can Dave, I go? go? I walk yeah. into the bar, yeah. right? <laughs> I sit up next to you. <laughs> hey, Joel, you think you have an emotional connection with your controllers, but you haven't met me yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just all, all right, for you, all right. Joel. I've got mine. I've got mine. <laughs> I walk up. I'm like, <clears throat> okay. Hey there. Uh, we're going back to classic voice here. <laughs> you're, uh, hey there. Uh, my name is Jeremiah. Uh, your mom said I'd find you here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Keep it with your family. <laughs> <laughs> Just like abuse. Oh, you've heard that joke? That's a terrible joke. I prefer my beers. Oh, um, I prefer my beers like I prefer my abuse domestic <laughs> i don't con to know domestic abuse or domestic <laughs> beers okay okay i have i have my decision down everyone <laughs> need to vote dave or jeremiah based on the answers who you think had better answers <laughs> over all question? three to all the questions all all three of the questions just who had the better answers oh, so just go ahead and go right now <laughs> <laughs> I feel unclean. <laughs> I hope no, when they're lining us up and the so. robots take over, when the robots, you know, rise up and they're they're judging us all, I hope it's something more like it makes more sense than this does. Because <laughs> so, I don't feel I'm like I would do well. Just a few minutes to for people to. I get feel like I'd be there going, "No, wait, guys, I can do better." Okay, while we're while we're waiting, Dave, can you do comments of the week while we're waiting? Yeah, go ahead and vote, guys, in the in the chat there. Um, <laughs> comments of the week, actually. 
I had a couple, but I'm going to pull uh, two that go together off of the video I put live like two hours ago, our newest Daisy video. Um, just some squad love for the rest of you guys. Comment number one, Debbie sounds well annoying. <laughs> Followed by... The, it's just overall. It's not just round one. It's just overall. Like, who do you think did better? So it's not just based on round one, round two, round thing. So just go. So Skylar Mon, just put, just say Jeremiah or Dave. <laughs> Continue, Dave. Sorry. Followed by, Germ is so annoying. He rambos it and then takes it out on his teammates for being slow and deliberate. <laughs> Wait, what, which episode was this? Um, it's the one where me, you, and Debbie get wrecked in bears, you know? <laughs> okay, I can tell people why. I can tell people exactly why. Well, and I fully excuses. admit. No, 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 I do ramble a lot of the time. The, the reason I get irritated, uh, irritated sounds like I'm upset at Dave. I'm not upset at Dave. Where me and Dave's <laughs> playstyles differ is Dave is more cautious going into stuff, which means Dave dies less. I only feel like the need to ramble it because I hate it when people shoot at me and then combat log. So I know if someone shoots at me, if they haven't shot at me within 30 seconds, they might be gone. And I would rather rush them and die than have someone shoot at me and then just never, ever see them again. Like that frustrates me so much uh, that that's why I, that's why I like to rush in. But I'm not defending, like, if I sound irritated, I'm not really irritated, and Dave knows that. No, it's, it's so, tactical conversation. Like, I was yelling at Edgar last night because he wasn't, wasn't following like he was supposed to be. <laughs> did you just say tactical conversation? I did so just I say have, tactical I have to add a mom joke in there. Just that's what your mom calls it, tactical <laughs> conversation. So. I don't know what that means. <laughs> and actually, Jeremiah, I, I replied to the comment, and that's what I said, too, is that uh, that footage was recorded off of a few weeks where it was like half of our encounters ended with us taking fire followed by the other party combat logging. Like it was a few weeks of that consistently. It was obnoxious. It's so annoying. Like I, I don't want there to be like a five minute timer in the game. That just seems lame, but I don't know. I, I don't know what the solution is to that, but they still haven't fixed it. It's still annoying. And now it feels even more annoying because you know, there's like, if someone just logged out instantly, it's kind of like whatever. But if you know someone's stringing you along, trying to like get you to stay buttoned down so they can log out safely, that just pisses me off so much. Yeah, I almost want them to bring back the thing like you can't log out if people are within, you know, a certain if you're, distance if you're in you. combat mode, yeah. or if you're in combat mode, which sometimes was annoying and you'd have to run for like ten minutes out into the wilderness in the mod. But I'd prefer that. <laughs> anyway, what's your other comment? Those were the two comments. Just all of you guys getting flack. So everybody why, loves me. Why is Debbie annoying? What did Debbie do? I thought it was hilarious. Because she was brand new to the game and we were helping her. <laughs> so I said to us, I'm like, oh, guys, how do I do things? Oh. You guys should see what I don't broadcast. The freaking amount of time that I spent or spend digging through Steam screenshots. You're in Belota. <laughs> You're heading west. No, Yoshi, you missed the airfield. <laughs> well, that's the very nature of it. Exactly. Is Dave and I play the most Daisy. Yeah. So we know the most out of the group. Dave still knows more than me about the geography on a pretty consistent basis. Also because Dave reads every single thing on r slash Daisy. He's just more up to date on everything with the game. I've also spent a lot of time in the Arma 2 editor in Chinaris. So I've seen it right. from like a, an overview perspective quite a lot. Yeah. But, but that's... Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's why it's it's we spend a lot of time helping people because we want people to enjoy the game. It's like if someone doesn't know something, it's not their fault. They're just new to it. But anyway, I think it's great footage and people who are actually watching it seem to agree that it's it's pretty great. I thought our yeah. our dialogue in that beginning of that video was pretty great. Have you watched it yet, Jeremiah? I have not. I haven't yet. Just watch the first two and a half minutes. It's just it's all the shenanigans <laughs> where me, you and Edgar and Debbie all met up and we were like trying to head northeast and like Debbie couldn't figure out how to put her pistol in her pants. Like the, the back, the back and forth was just great. <laughs> and how when Edgar's like trying to tell her how, how you like use the hot bar to put it back in your pants, he can like tell it's gonna sound super awkward, and he kind of like trails off at the end. He's like, "Well, if you hit one again, you just put it back in your pants." <laughs> He's kind of like trails <laughs> off. <laughs> it was a lot of fun that night. It's good stuff. Wait, is Funky Fresh eighty seven in chat? Is that Debbie? Hi. Is it? Sure that is. I think that is Debbie. Is it? Hmm. Dun, dun, right. dun, dun. Anyway. All right, Joel. So voting's in. Who won slash lost whatever's happening? <laughs> what is that? Um, so the whole reason for this was you guys were competing for a copy of Dark Souls. 
and Jeremiah won with four votes to one, Dave. Ooh. Aww. Can you read my thing? Honestly, <laughs> if, I, if I can be honest here for a moment, I would have voted for Jeremiah just for that last question. <laughs> I, I think that's the only reason I won. It was beautiful. Was, uh, <laughs> Uh, but that's why I wrote down. I don't know. It looked like it reversed it when I held it up to the camera. But I, I was like, wait, Joel's getting too excited about this. And he said we were coming back to Dark Souls, which is foreshadowing. And Joel's a director, so he'd know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. What? No, I'm not that happy to see you. <laughs> Joel's just like, no. But like, Jeremiah, you know what you have to do for your copy of Dark Souls? You win. <laughs> <laughs> now you earn it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, he knows you guys. I thought this game was supposed to ease you in. <laughs> <laughs> We're going in drunk. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you guys that are watching the video feed, you just missed out on Joel's magnificent director's edition crotch shot with his webcam. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you, Joel, very much. I will greatly enjoy Dark Souls 2. It, it, is, it is on the way. It is the way. He sent me a gift. Aww. I told I told James that he he was supposed to jump on here. He he didn't want to go unless I told him, but I d couldn't tell him, so he lost out. He's gonna be pissed. He's why did, why wasn't he on uh, last week? Was everything cool? Uh or honestly, I should I not? I honestly I, forget, I honestly don't even remember. Okay, okay. I remember he was here and he like he had to leave and take yeah, care of something. It's it, okay. was about, it didn't like, matter. About his kids or something. Okay. Oh, his kids, <laughs> needy. <laughs> He's a family when you have the YouTubes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh anyway who's jc gelzo oh that's that's joy it's my wife oh oh she's actually watching yeah, the podcast she's watching. yeah she's chilling all right and she voted for you <laughs> my wife watched uh one of our podcasts for the first time today she watched the one where we were all at your house a couple of weeks ago oh, no <laughs> <laughs> <Here are. laughs> what i'm just telling them all the the mean things you said to me <laughs> Yes, it said you watched the podcast from a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. She told me I talked too fast, and she also asked that I never make that noise again. <laughs> I love that voice. Jeremiah, did, did you show her the video that I made with the zoo? <laughs> with the what? The zoo animals. You know what I'm talking about. I'm posting the link in the description for you guys that haven't seen it yet. I think I've totally blanked out on what we're talking about. We're zoo animals. I went to the zoo a few weeks ago and I found you. Oh yes, she saw that. She saw that. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure. I'll post it in the in the comments here so you guys that haven't experienced uh, it. Yeah. It's unlisted, so this is an exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah, we should somehow record something since we're hanging out this weekend. Yeah, yeah, we that should. Well, I have a portable recorder now. We could even stop borrowing that one. That'd be hilarious. Camper yeah, money. <laughs> No, that was uh, business money. Okay, camper money is going for a few home furnishings and then into savings. <laughs> no, he's earning his Dark Souls game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The um, I've actually bought some video equipment now. I've got my first actual paid video project on Monday. Nice. It's a technical video on how to use a van for an assisted living facility. It's gonna be thrilling. <laughs> I can hear the elevator music right now. <laughs> It'll just be a fun I can help you uh, out with that. I'm currently very experience. good and experienced with good elevator music. Everyone's like, Joel, you listen to oh, freaking elevator music. I'm like, thanks. Oh, your bonobo stuff? Yeah, everyone says, I'm like, like hey, what does everyone want to listen just to? Just because it doesn't have freaking lyrics doesn't mean it's you elevator music. You want to listen to a drunk saxophone <laughs> player <laughs> working out his childhood issues <laughs> with his instrument? <laughs> 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 oh, Sigari. Yeah, I never followed up from last week. I did not trade guns for the camper. I decided to go with a cash deal uh, for many reasons, like money. Um, but no, I, I did not end up trading. Another guy asked me if I would trade guns for the camper. I think he wanted to trade me guns and then a souped up golf cart, like a golf cart with mud tires and a like. I have seen those golf carts around. Have you guys seen them? Do they have those where you live? Uh, no. what? They don't have souped-up golf carts. That's a no. thing, right? No, no. Where they're like painted have... metallic covers, colors, and they have like muddy, like big mud tires and chrome and all kinds of stuff. Oh, anyway, that's not a thing around here. That's a thing. But anyway, does anyone have anything else as we wrap the podcast? Down? Oh, I guess um, I'm gonna actually try to give away a real game to like people that watch the show. But this time, I was like, I'm giving to my personal friends first. 
Well, thank you, Joel. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know what we're going to do, Joel? We're going to make this a Let's Play. We're going to make this a video. I would love to. Joel's going to teach me Dark Souls. And Mark, Mark, if you're watching or you listen to this, whenever you're available too, it'll be a rotating series. Whoever's available, I'll take both of you. <laughs> Whoever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was on purpose. I can see from your face that you just did not think that one through. Uh, I did not, dude, did not I think it, that one through. I have it ready whenever you're ready. <laughs> well, I'll start, I'll start downloading it, so I'll have it ready in like 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's next play. I mean, it just came out, so the time is now to start streaming, my friend. The time is now. Is now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I've got some good news for next week. I, I don't want to tack it on to the end of this podcast. So, Wait. Do I know this good news? It's not good news. It's, it's just gun news. Gun news. Not oh, gun, gun news. news. I thought good news. I was like, really? News. What's going on? <laughs> Dave's moving to Chechnya. I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> We've been playing. I'm just feeling like the end of this podcast is good. Usually it's the intros that are awkward. <laughs> this time it's the end. Uh, Thank man. you guys. Thank you guys for coming out and joining <laughs> us. Uh, to any of you who are watching or listening to the audio podcast, you know, you can always rate us on iTunes if you like the show. That helps boost us in the rankings, and we always appreciate that. Also, uh, if you listen to the audio version and you've never checked out a video podcast, your experience is incomplete. So head over to twitch.tv slash germgaming or check out my YouTube channel or Evil Viking 13's YouTube channel, and you can see the videos from the podcasts. Uh, and one of these days, we ought to stream live on your Twitch channel too, Dave. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, it's real. I can stream straight from my computer still. You don't even have to set up anything. I just need your stream key. Um, and I can stream straight oh, to it. Dude, like that power with all of my mm. 42 you change, followers. <laughs> you can change. You have more than me. You can change the stream key. You have 53. Followers on Twitch? Yeah. Oh, didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> um, Swag. <anyway. laughs> well, you've been doing that a lot lately, and I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> Sorry, Have you noticed you know, that you're doing it a lot Dave lately? makes a lot of fun of like people like saying YOLO and stuff, yet he says it more than I've ever heard anyone else say it. So I think he secretly is in love with this. He's like, only three years behind the uh, the vast mocking of the phrase. Yeah, too. I know. And, and you I've do got hashtag. a smartphone. I do have a smartphone. <laughs> I have enjoyed like how late to the party you are on smartphones and how you keep it's bringing up. Like, are you world. guys? Wait, wait, hold on. Were you guys aware that the internet is on this? <laughs> and the year 2010 looks at him and is like, yes. Yes, we all knew. He's like, no, no, guys, you don't understand. You're about to ask Google something. It looks like you're about to tell Google to do something for you. Okay, Google. Casual shenanigans gaming. It knows us. It knows. <laughs> all I see is a glowing white screen. <laughs> oh, well, of course it brings up your thumbnail. I'm in the SEO. future. Just because you're 10 times the size of me online, not in the real world. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can go a few different directions with that one there. <laughs> all of them are valid. <laughs> we'll be going through all the directions when I visit him. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know, but I think I know what he wants it to mean. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Guys. Cut the feed. Cut the feed. We got to we gotta button this thing down. Thank you guys for joining us. You can write in to be a part of the show, casualshenanigans at gmail.com with your computer build questions, your constructive feedback, which we will ignore, and uh, your fawning adoration are all welcome. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube at the things I mentioned before. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for coming out, and we'll see you this. all next time. <laughs> what? Thank you for coming out and tolerating this. <laughs> And uh, we'll see you guys next time. See you guys. Take care, everyone. Stay casual. Mmm, deep.